And welcome back folks, welcome to another Let's Play. Today we're going to play a very new game I discovered. Um, I don't even, I'm not even sure how what it's called. Um, it is apparently a Russian game produced in, that was a bit quick. Yeah, produced in 1987, so that was before um, the fall of the wall. It is a Russian game and um, its title seems to be Tetris or something like this, but um, I looked in a dictionary and Tetris isn't even an English word, so... Um, I have different theories what the name of this game actually is. Um, we're just going to call it the game. Um, so as I said, it's a game that I just recently discovered and it seems to be fairly unknown as far as I can tell. Um, as I already mentioned, it's a Russian game. Um, it's a, it's, so it's a very interesting game because it appears to be simple on the surface, but it has a um, it has many layers of symbolism and very clever analogies woven into it and political critique even. Um, so yeah, this is um, a game that can be played by one player or two players. It has different game modes and different music. Um, we're going to play the normal mode. It has nine, le no, ten levels actually. Yeah, you need to call, of course. Um, if you count from zero, then you, it's, it's always n, n plus one, so to speak. So there are ten levels. Um, I never got past the first level really, or the zeroth level. So I can't tell much about the story of this game. Um, I'm not even sure whether it has a story, per se. Um, but then again, there are some really clever political commentary. But let's just stop uh, talking about this game and just let's play it. So, what do you do? Um, basically, you see here this um, oddly shaped shape. Yeah, this. You could, I think you could say it's a brick, maybe, even. Um, falling down from above, and note this, this is going to be important later. There's a very clever symbolism hidden in this, even in this very basic stage of the game. So it's a brilliant game. So these pieces of, of yeah, of wall, they are falling down from above. And the, the goal of this game is to, um, yeah, basically build a wall. And now if it, that doesn't sound political, then I don't know what does. Um, so, but this game has a twist. Um, as soon, yes, so there you see, as soon as you make one layer of brick, which is, um, yeah, basically flawless, the blocks will actually disappear. So there's a kind of a struggle um, you're, on the one hand, you're creating, you're, build, you're building a wall, but um, as soon as you build a wall, it actually starts to decompose itself. So that's, a, um, I think it's a very clever um, and even quite daring um, commentary of the system um, in the form of, well, back then it was the Soviet Union very um, daring critique of the Soviet Union and its system. Um, so I explained to you one one layer of this game. There are many other layers. It's a very very clever um, very clever analogies. but the gameplay seems to be fairly simple at least um, in the first level as far as I can tell. Um, in the first level of this game, um, there are just these blocks falling down and there's nothing else. So it's a bit boring, but I think the later level levels they will add more variety to this, to this gameplay. Um, but then again, it's a very hard game. I never, I never even got past the first stage. Um, well, I say never, I'm just recently discovered this game, so it's, I didn't play it for such a long period. Um, of course it was, released in 1987, but 
it has to gone fairly under the radar as far as I can tell. I'm I mean I looked everywhere for this game um, and I couldn't find any information. I mean the thing is so in the title screen it seems to spell Tetris but that's not an English word since I looked at the dictionary and there was no entry. Um, so I'd had other theories. One figure being this, um, it's a Russian game of course and in Russia you don't have the normal alphabet like normal people do but it's a different alphabet. Um, a very odd looking alphabet. In fact it's Cyrillic. And in the Cyrillic alphabet, even though it's a completely different alphabet from the normal alphabet, um, there are some letters that look like normal letters. Like the, they have a T, they have an E, um, they even have a C, but it means something completely different. So my idea was this is actually the title was in Cyrillic, but then look, I looked at the Wikipedia article of Cyrillic and I looked at the different characters there, um, and it didn't quite fit. It almost fit, but the problem is um, they don't have an R in Russian. I mean they have they have an R, but it's um, flipped along the vertical axis. Um, but then I thought maybe that's the whole point. Maybe um, they it's it's basically Cyrillic, but they it's a different kind of Cyrillic. Like you could imagine what would the Russian language be if the the alphabet was different. So. Again, this is, um, can be interpreted politically. Um, if language can change, then maybe societies can also change. You see there are um, yeah, many, many layers of political commentary in this game, so it's, yeah, it's, li it's, like, a it's like a Russian doll. I mean, you uncover layers and then layers of layers, of layers and it never stops. Um, so my theory, yeah, about this name's, this game's name, um, was that it's Cyrillic but slightly modified. So my theory was um, that it should be spelled, it should be um, Tetya 15. So the second, the, the last, um, the, two, the two last characters actually are not um, even letters; they are numbers. Because, I mean, you can't really make a distinction between S and 5, so I think it's actually called Tetya 15, and I looked for Tetya 15 in the internet, but there was um, nothing, actually. So I assumed that, um, yeah, there's actually, there are no, um, yeah, there are no resources, no documentation of this game whatsoever. This actually makes sense because, um, as I already explained, I hope I try to explain it. This is a very, um, it's a critique of the Soviet system. Um, it's a bit cryptic, but it's there, it's definitely there. Um, and I only even scratched the surface. For instance, what I mentioned in the beginning, what I said would be very, really important is that there are these blocks that you used to build a wall, but at the same time the wall destroys itself as soon as it's built. Well, where do these blocks come from? Well, they come from above. And what do you associate with um, with above? Well, it's of course heaven or God or even authority. So it's it can be interpreted into when we lost, by the way. Um, so let's start again. Okay. Um, so it can be interpreted in two ways. First of all, it means authority. So the authority commands you to build a wall. But it also can be interpreted not just politically but um, religiously. And then it would be an, 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 an analogy for God. So this game actually equates um, the Soviet system, the Soviet rulers with gods. Um, which is ironic because the communists, as we all know, actually, I mean the communist ideology um, 
one of its goals um, is to destroy is to destroy religion um, because religion is a force that binds um, that is a, it's a form of cohesion it keeps society together and if um, you want to start a revolution there's one thing that, what you don't want is that society um, yeah is cohesive and yeah stable you want to destabilize a society in order to start a, um, a revolution and that's why the communists um, are so anti-religion and so what this game does is I mean, it, it equates the Soviet rulers to um, gods it shows the hypocrisy um, um, of the system because it it claims that it demolishes um, religious authority only ending up with actually replacing um, God with another yeah another God the the Soviet God you you might say so it's many many layers of um, yeah very clever symbolism and just in this very I mean simple looking game it, it looks like a puzzle game actually um, as if you were only trying to fit blocks into each into each other but it's actually much more than this and so since it's such a damning satire of the Soviet system it's um, it's it has such the power of analogy is to is that it makes you think it shows you how reality is I think that's um, was understood basically <laughs> I think that the Soviet uh, rulers understood the danger that this game posed and so they actually decided um, that this game should be censored um, so I so I would assume I, I, I don't know I mean um, I haven't checked but I would assume that therefore this game wasn't actually actually the sorry actually released um, until the fall of the wall and when the wall came down nobody knew about this game and so it was very obscure um, but apparently some copies of this game survived and so I was very lucky to find this um, a site on the internet where this game was being presented and it looked very odd and it, because it, um, it's a Game Boy game and it's you would assume that for such a popular console um, you would know all the game after these many years that, since these console existed but this was completely new to me so I, I um, first impulse was to play it and to show you this game in the hopes that you yeah that you also um, might want to enjoy it. Um, I think I will put a link in this in the description where you can find this this game. And again, I'm not sure with the name. I think it's I think it's called Tetya 15. Um, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, so I I will try to get the past the first level maybe and show you the rest of the game. Um, but it's a very it's a very hard game and I've never actually been able to get um, yeah, past this first level. Okay, maybe you can actually yeah, you can jump between levels, but maybe there's an end an end boss, I, I don't know. So we will we will then skip the boss fight in this sense and just okay. The second level appears to be quite similar at the start at least. Um, so that these blocks falling down. And so far I can detect no difference, um, but maybe this difference will manifest itself in time. Um, yeah, if you can spot a difference to the previous level, please leave me a comment. Maybe I will actually, um, when I've recorded this video, reanalyze it and try to find out. Maybe it's just very subtle. This could be a political message again. Um, I mean, as we have learned, 
This game is full of uh, subtle um, commentaries and analogies. So I wouldn't be surprised if there is change, but it's hidden. Ah, I actually, yeah, this wasn't optimal, I think. Um, yeah, it's a bit hard to try to analyze this game and play it at the same time. But I will do my very best. Um, okay, we've com we've cleared one layer, that's good. Um, I think I'm getting, I'm, I think I'm getting uh, the hang of it slowly. So, basically, yeah, you wanna avoid the situation when you are stacking too much blocks on top of each other. Um, that's basically, I think it's the main idea of this game. Um, okay. Yeah, to the la I think there's, yeah. Um, okay, now it's getting more difficult. So we don't have the blocks that we would need to clear this, but now we have a block that we can use to clear two of these and then clear another two. Um, so it's so it's a very interesting power balance. Again, um, obvious political commentary here. A struggle between the forces of creation and the forces of destruction. Both of which actually um, are the same as we've learned. I mean, the way you destroy these blocks is by putting new blocks in. I think this not my my initial analysis might even be too restricted. Um, if you just read it politically, that's I think correct. But you can also read it um, on a more ah, this was very good. I think you can read this on a more fundamental philosophical level even. Um, just like life, where there is a certain very strange symmetry between life and death, um, which manifests itself in many different ways, like um, one example being, um, yeah, which which somehow demonstrate the, the oddness of the symmetry is that um, when you got, get older, um, you deviate from your initial form. If you are a child, yeah, you are small, you are weak, and then you get stronger. But then, if you get um, older, un uh, after some point it reverses, and you become weaker, and even smaller. People, old people, they shrink in size. And, yeah. There's a saying which um, says, you come into this world with, with a scream and you leave this world with a scream. And so, um, that's a, at first it's a very strange thing, but if you think about it long enough, you will recognize um, that death itself is actually the prerequisite for a new life. There would be no life without death. And so this um, game, I think, even points to this very deep truth. That death and life are essentially the same thing. And you can't have one without the other. Um, just as you can't have blocks without destruction. I think that's the main takeaway point from this game. Um, yeah. Okay, this was not very optimal. Um, it has a very nice music too. Um, it has a very mellow tone to it, which is deceiving actually. Because this game um, is actually um, not an easy puzzle game at all. It's a it's a very difficult game, first of all, and um, it's even philosophically very challenging, very yeah, very hard to inter interpret. I mean, I've I've tried to give you some yeah ideas of what this game is all about, 
Um, and I think there are many more layer, layers to dis be discovered. Um, but maybe that's not up to me, but to, up to other people. Yeah, I hope um, with this little video I have inspired you to look at this game and yeah, to yeah, let the knowledge of this game be spread throughout the world, that the world will know about this very interesting game which seems to have been completely forgotten. Um, so Tetja 15 is, yeah, it's a, it's a very deep game and I wish I really wish I would be better at this, um, but unfortunately, I yeah, I don't seem to be able to complete any level. <clears throat> so, it, um, maybe we could actually try one more. We could try to go on to the maybe the next level and see if this is any different. Um, Again, I haven't seen any differences in the second, I mean the first level, um, sorry, which is the second level, but I mean, so level number one, which is the second level, um, but maybe here there will be some differences. Hmm. Maybe it's in the distribution actually of these blocks. Um, It could be that, yeah, there's a, a um, that this is in fact a statistical pattern. So you wouldn't recognize um, um, this if you just look at individual instances, but if you would actually count the number of blocks and um, for each variety of a block you would count how many times it appears, you would perhaps see a different distribution between two levels um, and again this could be a political commentary that individuals don't matter at least not in the Soviet system it's only the sheer numbers that count um, hmm. but then again I have an even more wild theory perhaps there is no change Perhaps this is the real message of the game. That life never changes. Which again which would conform somehow to the idea of the um, cycle of life and death, which seems to be never changing. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit too complicated for me. Um, I think I will leave this analysis to more analytically minded people um, after all I'm really not I'm not a philosopher um, and I'm not I'm not trained to answer these questions I I'm just a yeah a let's player trying to figure out the, the possible meaning of this game and it's very it seems to be very hard um, so I'll, I will post this as a challenge to you, that you will um, maybe try to draw your own conclusions and if you have any yeah, ideas about yeah, what this game could possibly mean, I would be very interested to hear it. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, that was not um, very brilliant. Ah. Oops, ooh, ah. Okay, um, and then again, yeah, I couldn't... Uh, yeah, the, the forces of, yeah, creation or is it destruction? Which of the two is it? Um, this force prevailed and I was not able to bring down the wall. But as we learned, of course, in history, the wall came down. Um, so maybe it's only a game. Or maybe it is not a game. Hmm. Um, before I will get... I will drift off too much into philosophy um, and speculation. I think I will leave it at that and I will just recommend this game to you. 
Um, again, I will put a link to this game in the, in the description. It's called Tetya 15. It's made by a Russian developer. Um, and yeah, it's a very interesting game. Um, and then, yeah, this was just a little, yeah, a little sort of intermezzo because my Fallout Let's Play is almost at the end. And the next Let's Play um, will actually um, something completely different. I will make a Let's Play of um, all of the Call of Duty games in order. Um, I will have I have decided that I will yeah I will play for all the Call of Duty games, and I will. Yeah, until I've done that, I will not put any different content on this channel. So this was a little break before I will go into this um, Call of Duty marathon. I think it's a very interesting franchise, which um, should be explored by me. And yeah, I will hope to see you when I start this new Let's Play, my Call of Duty marathon, which will start probably in the beginning of April. Um, until next time.